Who is the most important Mariner for the rest of the season? Who's next to get extended now that Victor Robles is locked up long term? We'll answer that and more coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Tuesday, August 13th, 2024. This is Tidding as Allison and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to be opening up the mailbag and answering some listener questions on today's show. But before we do, shout out to our title sponsor today, FanDuel. Make every moment more. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel. FanDuel.com to get started. And if you want to hear from me and Colby even more and help support the show, check out our Patreon. The link is in the description and you can sign up for a free seven day trial. We're going to kick off our mailbag episode here with a question from a show, E Show. Let me know in the comments below or on Twitter how to pronounce that name. They ask, who's the most important player to improve down the stretch? Or is it more important that just anyone gets hot? Uh, to answer the second part of the question real quick, I mean, yes, but there's obviously varying levels of like what that ceiling is and how impactful that can be. Uh, like Julio getting hot is a lot better than, you know, Mitch Garver getting hot or it's mm-hmm. a lot better than Leo Rivas getting hot. Right. Uh, but to answer, like, who's the most important Mariner for the rest of the season? Yeah, it's Julio. Still Julio. Yep. Full stop. Quick, I mean, it's a quick answer, but it's obviously the right one. There is one player on this team that has superstar upside that has can get hot and carry you to a world championship upside, and that's Julio Rodriguez. Now, to be yeah. fair, Randy Rosarena almost already did that once in his career. So, yeah. like, it's there, but I think at this stage, we know who Randy Rosarena is. We understand what a Lynn Sanity run is, and he's still been very, very good in the playoffs, but nowhere close to what he was back in 2020, um, which, you know, would basically be impossible to do. He was the best player on the planet for like three weeks in 2020. Uh, But Julio's the guy, like he is the superstar. He is the guy who can literally put a struggling offense on his back. And and he's, you know, the rising tide that lifts all the ships. Like he, he's that guy. Uh, Mm -hmm. So if Julio gets hot, if we get, you know, August Julio from last year for any stretch, then the Mariners offense probably goes from, you know, mediocre right now at best to top 10 in all of baseball. And, and with this pitching staff, that does a lot. And, not, you know, with Julio, it, it's not just he gets hot at the plate. It's now he's on base and he has speed and now he's playing defense and all that. So, like, Julio at his 100th percentile uh, is, you know, one of the five best players in baseball. So that's the mm. easy answer. It's Julio. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Willie, I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. But, uh, yeah, Julio's the answer here. Next question here from Anthony. Now that Victor Robles is extended, who's the next most likely guy to get an extension? First few names that that pop into mind. Obviously, Cal Raleigh, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby. Those are the guys that we've talked about a lot when it comes to extensions over the last few months, especially Mm -hmm. this past offseason. Nothing has happened on those fronts yet. I would assume, I I think it's safe to assume that the Mariners have at least approached all of those guys about extensions. They just haven't really gotten deep into talks on that as far as we know, right? Could happen at any time. Sure. Uh, I would say that a a sneaky one, though, is Randy Rosarena. He's got two years left of club control. Uh, They're both arbitration years, so you could buy out his arbitration years and maybe a year or two of free agency. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we've talked about extensions. We talk about them every winter, um, and we kind of sprinkle it in throughout the the year. So uh, as we've talked, some of you guys have heard this before, some of you haven't. The Cal Raleigh extension is a difficult one uh, because the Mariners will still have him for three years after this year. So if you want to give Raleigh an extension, it's a you know four-year you know deal at minimum, and he's already going to be 30, 31 when he becomes a free agent. He's got a lot of wear and tear on his knees. He's been banged up his entire career. Uh, he's played through it like he's a warrior, but that's a lot of wear and tear. And I mean, just look at a guy like Mitch Haneker, who just has so many nagging injuries pop up that 
you know, kind of saps his, you know, kind of saps his, his game and Hanniger's only 33. He shouldn't be like this broken down, but he is and the same things happen with catchers. So uh, the Raleigh extension is, is a difficult one uh, because, you know, it might just make the most sense for Seattle just to play it out and, and, you know, play that way. And, uh, you know, Kirby obviously is, is going to be very expensive. And so is Gilbert. I, my guess would be if the Mariners could choose, they would love to get Logan Gilbert done. I just think he exemplifies everything the Mariners want, uh, you know, in terms of just what a grinder he is, what the amount of work that he puts into it, like the study that he does, like, he is a, he's what the Mariners want other Mariners to be like. He is the example of that. So my guess is that they would prefer they had to pick one of those three to get him done. Uh, but there are some you know complications there as well. Uh, so it, and plus you have him for three more years after this year, just like Cal. So there's really no rush to get that done. I'll give you a name here that is we probably haven't talked a lot about. I think we did mention him in our extension series this last winter. Uh, but what about Brian Wu? What yeah, about sure. you go to Wu, a guy who has an injury history, a guy who's had a Tommy John in, in his background. Um, you go to him and you say, look, you're five years from free agency after this year. Who knows what's going to happen in those five years? You've already dealt with a lot of injuries. Uh, so let's get you some money now, guarantee money now. And then we're going to kind of, you know, shave some money. We're going to have to, we're going to have to spend on you on the offset or, uh, you know, in the future by paying you a little bit more now because Mariners don't have to pay Wu and really anything above league minimum for the next two years anyways. Uh, so what if they say, Hey, you know, like we'll give you $5 million next year and 6 million the year after that. But then obviously once you get into our years and free agent years, you're going to take less. Uh, you you get, you basically you're, you're taking money that you could make in the future and you're giving it to them now. And yeah. so I, I think something like Wu, if you go to Wu and you say, Hey man, you got five years till free agency. You want to do like seven and, and 45 right now, seven and 50, something like that. You buy a couple free agent years at well below market value cost and you get some cost certainty. We'll get some money in his pocket right now. And if he, you know, suffers more injuries, if he, you know, just kind of has this inconsistent career because of his health, then he's pocketed $50 million. So uh, I do think Brian Wu is actually a sneaky name to watch here because that is probably where the best value is going to come at like if, if you're extending uh, Kirby and, and Gilbert, you're going to get a good deal, but it's mm -hmm. not going to be as good of a deal as Wu because Wu has more question marks and he's further away from free agency. So uh, I've watched Brian Wu, uh, but my hunch is is that, and also side note, just throw this out there: I would still watch Matt Brash. I would still watch Gregory Santos. Uh, mm -hmm. it would be much cheaper extensions too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think you know if the Mariners could extend anybody right now they would probably pick Logan Gilbert. If, right. You know, I, I don't think that's going to happen uh, this year, maybe this winter, but not, you know, this season. Uh, but yeah, I, I would throw Brian Wu out there. Watch, watch Wu, uh, watch the guys who are quite a bit away from free agency and the mayor's just like, Hey, you know, do you want $40 million right now? Mm -hmm. And, you know, to buy, we can buy out a year or two of free agency from you. Those are the guys I would watch. Yeah. And then with Randy, I mean, the age makes it a little bit tricky. He's going to be going into his age 30 season next year. He'll be heading into free agency uh, before his age 32 season. But uh, I think maybe getting out ahead of his arbitration and then just getting an extra year uh, on that deal would would be nice. I mean, so far, he seems like he's been a great fit in the clubhouse and the dugout. Uh, he's obviously hit very well uh, in the small sample size we've seen of him in a Mariners uniform. And I, I think it's more than reasonable to expect that he can still produce at least a little bit close to what he's doing right now at, you know, 32, 33 years old. Sure. I'll throw one more name out, out there. I don't think this one's likely, but I mm -hmm. do think it's a guy that the Mariners would really like to have back. And that would be Jimmy Garcia. Uh, who's going to yeah. be a free agent after this year. So there is some, you know, there's a deadline to try and get that done. Are the Mariners going to want to give him $10 million a year? No, mm -hmm. probably not. I mean, that that that's not their MO. They don't really pay relievers. Uh, right. But Garcia just checks so many boxes that the Mariners typically go out and try to get. Then yeah. maybe they just look at it and they're like, hey, you know, you want two guaranteed years now at like 20 million bucks and then, you know, see if we can maybe massage the money a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I do think that there are definitely some options, but obviously Garcia is a free agent after this year. So less incentive for him to take an extension, but there's more of a deadline for the Mariners to try and get something done. If that's a guy that they want to try and bring back. And I, I think that they really like Garcia. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if 
they had just, you know, they could spend whatever they wanted to spend the front office and they were, they were willing to spend $10 million on a reliever. I bet that uh, Garcia would be the guy that they would target this winter. All right, we're going to answer more of your questions here in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Ibotta and, once again, FanDuel. Are you taking that dream vacation this summer but dreading the cost? With Ibotta, you get cash back on all of your purchases so you can spend more time making memories this summer and less time dreaming about them. Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. Earn on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies, even toys, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. You can save on over 2,400 brands and shop at over 1,000 retailers, including your favorite grocery stores, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and a whole lot more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the promo code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back by using the promo code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and the promo code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B. I know I'm saying the obvious here, but I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, unfortunately, we get fewer games. And the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right, there's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head on over to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, that's L-O-C-K-D-O-N, and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast tonight. You can catch all the action between the Mariners and the Tigers on the Mariners hometown broadcast with Sirius XM via the SXM app. All you have to do to find that is search the word Mariners. Let's get back into your questions here as we're opening up the mailbag. MC wants to know thoughts on Ahmed Rosario could be a great JP replacement in the interim. I agree. He is one of the guys that I wanted the Mariners to uh, target at the deadline. Uh, and he went for pretty much virtually nothing but then the Dodgers proceeded to not really play him and now they have DFA'd him to make room for uh, Mookie Betts who's returned just in time for the the Mariners visit to Dodgers Stadium uh, later on in this road trip yay uh, but yeah Rosario has been really solid this year and of course with the with the JP Crawford injury you know all due respect to Leo Rivas who's had a really good last couple of games uh, Demo's been solid you know he's been Dylan Moore, pretty much for the whole season. Um, yeah, Rosario would would certainly help. Um, so really what it comes down to is, one, will he get to the Mariners in the waiver order? Yes, you pass through 17 teams to get to the Mariners, I believe. Uh, and two, do they actually want to kick the tires on him if he does yeah. get there? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the answer is yes on the should they kick the tires on him front. The answer on will he get to them is maybe. I don't know. Possible. It's it's certainly not you know. uh, You know it's it's I wouldn't say it's a great chance he gets to him, but it's certainly not a bad chance either. It's not a poor chance that he gets. Like here here are some of the teams that are before the Mariners and the. in the waiver order. So the Braves, the Mets, the Cardinals, the Giants, the Rays, Cubs, any of those teams you think might take a chance on them? I think most of those teams feel pretty good about where their middle infield's at. Because like the no. White Sox aren't gonna aren't gonna no. pick them up. The Rockies, the Marlins, the A's, the all these teams that are out of it essentially. Right. Like they're not they're not there's no do reason. It. Um yeah, so like I said, it's not impossible. Uh it, it's uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's likely that he gets to Seattle, but he might, you know, sometimes, you know, decent players get all the way, they clear somehow. And, uh, you know, sometimes it seems you don't have a spot for him. Sometimes these teams just don't want to pay the salary that's left on his deal. Um, but I think Rosario only got $2 million, uh, this off season. So yeah. like he's probably got like 400 grand left. That shouldn't be a, a, a thing for any team, uh, especially the Mariners. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think we heard that the Mariners actually 
had interest in Rosario this winter, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but mm-hmm. what was kind of interesting about that is, is that the, tr- the trade cost to acquire him was basically nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, now he's a 27 year old reliever who hadn't pitched in the majors. Right. And by the way, was in the Mariners organization last year. Two, yeah. So like now look, obviously beauty in the eye of the beholder, you know, maybe the Rays really like this guy and they think he actually is very underrated, blah, 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 blah. Um, now, Jerry did say that the offensive players that they were interested in, that they didn't ultimately land, didn't get moved. Now, that doesn't necessarily right. have to mean that they weren't in on Rosario, kind of Falefa, et cetera. Sure. But, eh. Sure. But, I mean, now you've also got a couple more weeks of Dylan Moore playing every day, and it's not, mm, you yeah. know, he's kind of been replaced by Leo Rivas the last few days. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah. Like I said, he's uh, been Dylan Moore this season, right? There's sure. the highest of highs and then the lowest of lows. Just, is this guy even major league quality? Like there, there's all that. So yeah, yeah, it's tough. Um, I think they should be interested. I think Rosario is a great fit at the bottom of the order when you kind of roll it over. Like if you go Rosario hitting nine, and then it's Robles, and it's Rosarena, and it's Turner, and it's Cal, and it's like yeah. you can kind of. Uh, really roll that over and obviously you know uh, Rosario has value to Seattle even after JP returns he can play second he can play third uh, he's a pretty good athlete might even be able to play the outfield he's yeah he's played a, a little outfield I believe yeah this year. makes a ton of contact which is you know we've already seen how for example Justin Turner just the simple act of making contact uh, sometimes yeah. is enough uh, to score runs so I think it's a no-brainer I think they should have gotten him at the deadline they getting kind of a second chance here at this now it, it's kind of up to you know 17 other teams or whatever uh but to me it's a no-brainer he's better than leo rivas as much as i like rivas uh yeah. he's better than rivas he's better than dylan moore uh at least he is right now uh and he's probably a better option at third base even than josh rojas uh as particularly against lefties so yeah. yeah to me rosario it's a no-brainer you should you should have traded for him now you have this chance you might have this chance to get him again i hope they don't pass twice but you know they didn't seem to make much of an effort to get him at the deadline. So maybe they just look at him like, eh, you know, we're, we're, we're content. So we'll have to see yeah. what they think. He's had, they tw- he's had 23 games at, at second base, 20 games in right field, 15 at third, 14 at short and 10 at DH this year with the, uh, with the Rays and uh, a little bit with the Dodgers. He only had what? 12 plate appearances with the Dodgers. Really weird. Yeah. I know like Kike Hernandez started hitting and they also got Tommy Edmond, but Ahmed Rosario has been really good this year. Like 305, 331, 415. That's a 114 WRC plus. Yeah, he's not walking at all, just a 2.8% walk rate, but he's also not striking out that much either. 17.4% mm-hmm. uh, K rate. He would immediately be one of the Mariners' best hitters. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh I hope that they I hope if they get the opportunity to claim him, they don't pass it up. To me, that would just be a mistake. And uh they have a, an opportunity to kind of I don't want to say right or wrong, but like if they had gotten Ahmad Rosario two weeks ago at the deadline, uh we would have he would have been the third bat. We would have been like, Oh, that's an A deadline. Like he was yeah. the bat we wanted them to get that would have pushed us to be like, that's a great deadline. Uh so they have an opportunity here, and I hope they take advantage of it. Will they? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Will they have the opportunity to? We'll see. Right, right. But if they do, I I would be I would be disappointed if they didn't take that shot. Yeah, same, same. Because it just makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and he's essentially free, and he's hitting right now. Yep. Yep. Like, what is there not to like about that situation? I don't know. Next question here from Offshore. Got a chance to watch the Aqua Sox this series against the Hops and picked up some autos and got a Colt Emerson foul ball. Question, Michael Arroyo went 10 for 24 over the series. Is there any chance he gets moved up this year? Just feel like he balled out and it was too easy for him. First of all, congrats on the Colt Emerson foul ball. That's awesome. Uh, And the autos as well. Um on Michael Arroyo, yeah, he's having a really, really good year. Uh, he's been great down in high A. Uh, still a little bit of a strikeout issue, though. We talked about this, I, I think, last week. I, I even asked you, Colby, like if you thought that maybe he would get a cup of coffee at double A uh, before the year is out. Uh, but I, th- I think that strikeout issue is is going to keep him in high A for the rest of the year. We'll see, though. I wouldn't hate it. Yeah. Um, I think because he's 19... 
Did he turn 20 yet? No, he's he's 19 for the he's rest December, of the year, I believe. Right, December yeah. birth. Um, yeah, because he's 19, because of how like he's impacting November, the ball. Yeah. Okay, because of how he's just like crushing the ball, like high exit velos and all that stuff too. Mm. Uh, I'm not super concerned about the strikeouts. In fact, Michael Arroyo might be top five in my updated prospect ranks. So uh, he's uh, potentially not, same. Yeah, like I don't think that he is. Is he? Is he ahead of Laz Montes all of a sudden? Yes, but uh, anyways, he's crushing the baseball uh, down we, there. We got to do our prospect ranks soon, sure. by the way. Next yeah. week, I guess. I, I was kind of hoping this week with the weird uh, start times for the games, right. but whatever. We're a little behind on that. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, royo has been great. Uh, again, the strikeout rates, I don't want to say they're concerning, but I think they're enough to just kind of be like, yeah, let's just, let's just see if this improves down here uh, in, in high A and uh, I don't really see the the benefit of, of pushing a guy uh, to double A unless you're absolutely sure that he's ready for that challenge. Uh, so it, it's certainly possible over the next few weeks, you know, if he continues to uh, perform like this. I don't know exactly when Arkansas season ends. I don't know if that's early September or mid September, but it, it's possible he could get a couple, you know, you know, a cup of coffee in double A. But my guess is is that the Mariners just write him out at, at A ball. He's already progressed very nicely this year. Uh, you know, you don't want to try and get all that greedy uh, with a young guy, like a 19 year old. Uh, so my guess is he just starts the year in, in uh, or he finishes the year in high A. And I wouldn't be shocked yeah. at all if he started next year back in high A. Uh, right. But yeah, he, he could be, you know, Colt Emerson and, and like there's a non-zero chance Colt Emerson starts next year at double A. Uh, so uh, we'll see how it goes, but yeah, I, I'm not concerned about the strikeouts because of how hard and, and how frequently he's hitting the baseball with damage. Uh, mm. but I, I do think that it's enough for me to be like, hmm, let's not push it. Let's just keep him in a ball for the rest of the year. Let's yeah. see how he looks. And then maybe the next spring we can kind of reassess. And if he's ready for double a, we think at 20 years old, he's ready for double a fine. We'll do it. They had no problem doing it with Cole young who, yeah. you know, had similar success to, uh, to Royo in, in high a before he got moved up. So, uh, I, I think next year, the, you know, start of next year is realistic for him to be in double a. Well, it, it the K rate jumped up about seven and a half percent from low A to high A. That's not nothing. No. So, yeah, I mean, other than that, though, he's crushing it. 290, 404, 531. Those numbers are even better than what he was posting in low A. It's a 160 WRC plus, 27 and a half percent K rate, but a 14 percent walk rate, which is also a uh, career high up to this point for him. He already has eight bombs in 37 games. Right. That was the big question on Michael Arroyo heading into this year was, is he going to be able to hit for power? And he's answered those questions and then some this year. We'll see if that continues, especially once he starts, you know, hitting in, in Arkansas, which is a bit more of a pitcher friendly ballpark. Uh, but still, right. um, yeah, I mean, like he's he's significantly elevated his profile this year. Mm-hmm. And that can be understated. He's probably the best story that has come out of the the Mariners Meyer Leagues this year. Yep. Uh, you know, it looks like a guy who might be able to play second base. And being an above average hitter with above average power, uh, you know, and again, he's just 19 years old. So still lots of time left. He has a lot, a long way to go, but uh, obviously at just 19 already uh, quickly moving up ranks and, and, you know, quickly moving up the, you know, the leagues uh, pretty much uh, is, is a great sign. Yeah. And it's possible the Mariners may have their second baseman of the future and it might not be Cole Young. So let's answer a couple more of your questions here in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by Supply House. Get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trade, SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person. 
every time. Pros and the skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at SupplyHouse.com. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Once again, tonight, you can catch all the action between the Mariners and the Tigers on the Mariners hometown broadcast for Sirius XM via the SXM app. All you have to do to find that is search the word Mariners. Let's get into final couple of questions that we have from you guys. Jameson wants to know, uh, when JP comes back, what does the lineup look like versus both left and right-handed pitchers? I mean, JP hits nine, and the rest of the lineup pretty much looks the same that it has against righties and lefties. You know, JP basically replaces Rivas. Yeah. Uh, because, again, JP wasn't swinging the bat particularly well before he got hurt. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I, I don't think it I – mean, he's probably going to go on a rehab assignment, uh, almost certainly, but – uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's be difficult to expect a guy to come up off, off the IL and, and just hit right away. There's probably going to be an adjustment period even after the rehab stint. So yeah, he's going to hit, you know, I would imagine nine, uh, because of the on base skills. Um, so I, I don't think, you know, one makes any sense. Uh, the only thing that the only reason that I think he might still hit in the top of the order is because the Mariners don't really have a lefty and we know how much Scott likes in general to go you know, right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right. Uh, and the Mariners don't really have a, a powerful left-handed bat at the top of their lineup, except for Cal Raleigh, uh, who's not going to hit, you know, lead off for you. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he should hit nine. Against left-handed pitching, you might hit him lead off mm-hmm. uh, because he's actually crushed left-handed pitching this year. Uh, but, yeah, he's, he should hit nine. Uh, I think he should hit nine. Uh, and yeah. then, you know, Robles, we'll see. Uh, what he's doing when JP's come back, he had a bit of a rough home stand. Certainly had his moments, but uh, overall, mm-hmm. not not a great home stand statistically uh, for Robles. So it might be time by the time JP comes back that the Mariners are looking for a new leadoff hitter. Or it just shouldn't be JP, and then it might not be Robles at that time. It could be Julio, it could be a Rosarena, uh, it could be Justin Turner. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's certainly uh, options, but I just don't see any path where JP it should and will hit leadoff upon his return. Next question here from Alex. Do any of the numbers say what Robles is doing isn't sustainable? I mean, the BABIP's a little high since uh, he became a Mariner. Um, he's not hitting the ball particularly hard. The the chase and whiff rates are a bit high for my liking, even though that he's not striking out a ton. But I, I think the, the concerns about the unsustainability are more so relative to what he's done in the past. Yeah. Now, to be fair, and we've talked about this before, before he got hurt last year, he was pretty much doing this minus the power. Right. So, and that was like 30 or so games. So small sample size, but not incredibly small. And there have been other little moments, little pockets over the course of his career where he's hit fairly well. It's uh, really solid for that world championship team. Like he's yes. a key cog in that team. So it's not far fetched to think that he can at least hit a little bit. Right. Uh, and, Obviously, some of the success that we're seeing is tied to an actual tangible change that the Mariners helped him make in his swing. So it's just kind of a wait and see thing. Um, yeah, the the data in some aspects are, are not it's not great, but I don't know. There's nothing that I really see that makes me super concerned about that. Yeah, I mean, I would say this, like since he made his Mariners debut, this is from Mariners PR. Uh, he's hit 303 with 372 on base. To me, neither of those are sustainable. Yeah. Uh, just based on his track record, right? Uh, his WRC plus at 139, that's not sustainable. Again, based sure. on his track record. Uh, do I think that he can, you know, bring this energy? Do I think that he can, you know, be at least, you know, average at the play? Like, do I think he could be a 100 WRC plus bat mm. based on his track record? Sure. And, and again, there's been a tangible change that, you know, makes you think that, hey, that some of this might be sustainable. But yeah, you know, statistically speaking, he's not like he's crushing, uh, you know, the baseball every single time out. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the bat pip is a little bit high. But again, when you have when you have speed like Robles does, yeah. your bat pip is going to be higher. That's just how it works. And sure. 
Uh, obviously, he's not a guy that you can really shift on either. So fewer shifts, higher bat. Uh, so there mm-hmm. are some actual explanations for that. But to me, you know, I, I look at Robles and I, I think, you know, the Mariner, I think what the Mariners paid him tells you what they think of him, that he is going to be a solid fourth outfielder. And they think that there's some upside there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have given him the, the you know, the option and, and they wouldn't have given him the bonus incentives either. So to me, I, I look at Robles and I go, you know, is this level of production sustainable? No. Can he hit 250 with a league average on base, run into a couple home runs and, and steal some bags and play pretty decent defense in, you know, a hundred, in 400 plate appearances? Yeah. Yeah. I think he can actually. So yeah. Um, yeah. sustainable to this level where he's like, no, no. You know, basically right now, Robles would be the Mariners all-star representative if they were doing it over again. No, that's not sustainable. Sustainable to where he's actually, you know, a viable player who can play four or five times a week and at times will play six, seven times a week because he's hot. Yeah, I I think that is a a very realistic outcome uh, for Victor Robles, who, again, we should point out, just 27 years old. He's been playing in the bigs forever, but he's just 27 years old. Next question here, and our final question of the day comes from Doug. There's a decent chance the Rangers release several of their pending free agents to get under the luxury tax threshold. With the Mariners' record, they'd have a good chance at first dibs. Should they claim either slash both Kirby Yates and or David Robertson? So I haven't really heard anything about the the Rangers potentially doing that, but we did see the Angels do that last year after that trade deadline they had. trade deadline <laughs> yeah yeah uh so i don't know maybe maybe another aos team follows suit this year uh sure. the rangers look cooked <laughs> they got walked off last night by the by the red Sox. uh what are they nine games under 500 now eight games under 500 yeah something like that uh yeah they this looks like a two-team race now in the aos definitively right uh, so hey, by the way if they, they did if they did do that colby well, here you go. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say, you know, there's also guys like Andrew Chapin who they uh, acquired yeah. at the deadline who could be released. So Carson uh, Kelly's had a decent year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So don't think the Marys would have any interest in him, but probably yeah. not. But maybe. I mean, we're slowly creeping up on roster expansion. So, yeah. you know, why not carry a third catcher if he's your best option? Um, but yeah, should the Marys be interested in those guys? Yeah. I mean, to yeah. some degree. Uh, are either of those guys likely to get to Seattle? Probably not. Uh, just because, you know, every team, even the fringe teams right now that are just ahead of Seattle, they all need bullpen help just like Seattle does. So, uh, mm. yeah, they should they be interested? Yes. Should they put in claims? Yes. By the way, any team can do this. Like if, if you know, I don't know, the Giants just randomly decide to put Conforto on the, on the uh, waivers or whatever, like, Okay, that's a little different because he's making a lot of money, but you know what I mean. Like the Mariners should be scouring the waiver wire every day to look for opportunities to continue to improve their club. And and so I think they should be aggressive when they put in these claims. And when you're talking about a guy like Robertson, you're talking about a guy like Yates, neither of whom I think is making a ton of money this year, Um, especially, well, now you're only paying him for six weeks anyway. So, uh, yeah, I I do think that the Mariners should be aggressive uh, if a team decides to, you know, dump uh, like the Angels did last year. so yeah, I, I do think, and there's there's probably going to be vets like that. There's probably like, uh, you know, like Kevin Pilar or whatever on literally on the Angels. He's probably going to get put on waivers at some point because what's the point? Uh, you yeah. know, he's going to retire at the end of the year. Blah blah blah. Like, what's the point of him wasting away on the Angels or whoever? Uh, so mm. yeah, I do think we'll see some names, some veterans like Ahmad Rosario, like in that class. They'll get put on waivers to see if anybody wants to eat the money. So blah blah blah. Uh, so yeah, if, if Yates and Robertson are out there, the mayor should absolutely be interested and they should put in a claim on both and, and see what happens. But, uh, you know, I haven't heard that the Rangers are considering this. Uh, I do know that the luxury tax is, is something that they're, they're looking at. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, this is probably going to be the new norm, uh, where at least one or two teams every year is, is just going to throw all their expensive, you know, free agents out there to try and yeah. sneak under the luxury tax. So, uh, Seattle should be a team, uh, that can that's in a good position to take advantage of it. And they should, if they can. 
Absolutely. All right, that's going to do it for our show. But before we get out of here, a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Ted Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter. Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Tide Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Now head on over to Locked On Seahawks to get all the latest out of training camp from Corbin Smith and the gang and tell them Ty and Colby sent you. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we'll see you next time. Peace.